It was author Mark Rosen who said, the best way to deal with credit card debt is to educate yourself. In this lesson, we're going to average the daily balance using a credit calculator, and we're going to calculate the finance charge using a credit calendar. All to answer the question, how are the entries on a monthly statement calculated? Before we get into it, let's make sure we're ready for this lesson by taking a look at warm-up number two. The scores 4, 6, X, 8, and 10 are written in ascending order. Find the value of X if the mean of the set is equal to the median. The first thing to understand is that equals to the median. That is the middle. That means it is equal to X. And mean is average. So 4 plus 6 plus X plus 8 plus 10, all divided by 5. If we multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of that 5 in the denominator, we'll get 5x on the left. Adding it all up, we get 28 plus x. So when we move x to the other side, changing its sign, we get 4x is equal to 28, or x is equal to 7. Now, let's take a look at a problem that you will be able to do by the end of this lesson. Alex found an old credit card statement that was sent to him before the enactment of the Credit Card Act. He had no previous balance but was charged $4,000 that month. His credit card account had a monthly percentage rate of 1.5%. He made no additional purchases during the billing cycle. A minimum of $20 was required as a monthly payment. How long would it have taken Alex to pay down his debt if he continued to only pay the minimum amount without making any other credit card purchases? Purchases. Let's walk through a few months to see the status of Alex's credit card account. Alex pays $20 minimum payment and carries over the balance of $3,980. At the end of the next billing cycle, he must pay 1.5%, which is owed, so 0.015, and that means a $59.70 finance fee. After making the minimum payment of $20 determined, the balance will be carried forward to the next cycle. So if we carried the balance of $39.80 and they made a payment of $20, then we would wind up with $4,019.70. So a carried over balance of $4,019.70. Let's try this for one more month of the billing cycle. So we're gonna find 1.5%, which is $60.30. Add the carried over balance and subtract the $20 payment that was made. They now owe $4,060. Credit card users who do not pay their bill in full are charged a finance charge for the convenience of extra payment time. The finance charge is computed on any statement in which the consumer has a previous unpaid balance. The finance charge is based on the average amount the consumer owed each day of the billing cycle, the average daily balance. Average daily balance is used with the monthly periodic rate to determine the finance charge. Billing cycles and interest rates differ from card to card and from user to user with the same credit card. Here, we're gonna learn to calculate the average daily balance using a credit card billing calendar, often called a credit calendar. A credit calendar is a visual accounting of the purchases, payments, and balances for each day of the billing cycle. Now, let's calculate the average daily balance using a credit calendar. Use the information given in Alina K's credit card statement to verify the accuracy of her average daily balance. On a blank sheet of paper, we're gonna draw a grid that has seven boxes across, five boxes down, and they're gonna have a little arch in the bottom of each corner. On Elena's statement, we can find that the number of days of the billing cycle is 31. We're gonna shade in the last four days that we're not using. We're gonna enter the billing date, November 13th, in the corner section of the last day of the calendar. Number the days back from that date until the calendar is completely filled in. Notice that although the billing date is in November, the billing cycle includes some days from October. Enter the month of the first day in your calendar and the month of the first day of the next month. So you can see here I have October 14th labeled all the way through and when November 1st sh shows up, I then label to November 13th. We're gonna look at the posted dates of each of the charges or debits. 
we're going to put a plus sign and the charged amount on the calendar dates that have debits posted. So plus 67 on the 25th, plus 455 on the 29th, and minus 160 on the 5th of November. The first day of the billing cycle is October 14th. Now, the previous balance was $829.30. We're going to enter that into October 14th, and we're going to notice that Alina made no purchases or payments until October 25th. On October 25th, we're going to add $67 to that $829.30, and we're going to get $896.30. On October 29th, she made a payment of $455. A $55 purchase was made on October 29th, meaning we're now at $957.30. On November 5th, a $160 payment was made, bringing us now to $791.30. To find the average daily balance, we're going to add up all of the daily balance and divide that by the total of the billing cycle. So $26,488.30 divided by the 31 days in this billing cycle gives us $854.46. Now this can also be done on a spreadsheet. You can see that I created all of the boxes in the lower right corner. I put the dates as it moved through. Now on the top line of each box, that is the balance that is currently on the card. The box underneath that would be any payments or debits that were made. So the $67 purchase made on the 25th was put in there, but a negative 160 was put in on November 5th because it was a payment. In the C17 box, what I did is I averaged all of the numbers from line 1, 4, 7, 10, and 13. You can see what I wrote as the code in the command bar at the top. Now let's check our understanding and see is there a better time during the billing cycle when Elena would have made her payment so that the average daily balance would have been less. So here we can see it as it stands. And I chose October 29th and said, what happened if we made the payment then? We can see that by making the payment just seven days prior, we get a new average daily balance of $823.50. Now, the closer the payment is made to the beginning of the billing cycle, the lower the average daily balance for that cycle will be. Now let's calculate the finance charge using the credit calendar. Let's determine the finance charge for Alina's billing cycle. Because Alina did not pay off her balance in full for the previous month, she'll be paying a finance charge this month. Once the average daily balance is computed using the calendar, we're gonna find the finance charge using the average daily balance and the monthly periodic rate. Now, we already know the average daily balance is $854.46. If we multiply that by the monthly rate, so we get 1.415%, this means that she will be paying a finance charge of $12.09. You have to remember when calculating that 1.415% is 0.01415. Let's check our understanding of this. When might Alina have made her purchases during the billing cycle in order to decrease her finance charge? The later in the billing cycle purchases are made, the lower the average daily balance is going to be, which results in a lower finance charge. In 2009, President Barack Obama signed the Credit Card Accountability Responsibility and Disclosure Act, the Credit Card Act. Credit card issuers were required to include a box on the credit card statement to show how long it would take the balance to be paid off if only the minimum payment was made and no extra charges were put on. This is known as the minimum payment warning box. Most major credit card issuers use one of these methods for determining the minimum monthly amount. 2% of the balance or 1% of the balance plus all interest and fees. The Credit Card Act also requires that the minimum payment amount had to be enough so that part of it would be applied to paying down the debt. Before the Credit Card Act, this had not always been the case and as we can see in this next example. 
Alex found an old credit card statement that was sent to him before the enactment of the Credit Card Act. He had no previous balance, but was charged $4,000 that month. His credit card account had a monthly percentage rate of 1.5%. He made no additional purchases during the billing cycle. A minimum of $20 was required as a monthly payment. How long would it have taken Alex to pay down his debt if he continued to only pay the minimum amount without making any other credit card purchases? purchases. Let's walk through a few months to see the status of Alex's credit card account. Alex pays $20 minimum payment and carries over the balance of $3,980. At the end of the next billing cycle, he must pay 1.5%, which is owed, so 0.015, and that means a $59.70 finance fee. After making the minimum payment of $20 determined, the balance will be carried forward to the next cycle. So if we carried the balance of $39.80 and they made a payment of $20, then we would wind up with $4,019.70. So a carried over balance of $4,019.70. Let's try this for one more month of the billing cycle. So we're gonna find 1.5%, which is $60.30. Add the carried over balance and subtract the $20 payment that was made. They now owe $4,060. Balance carried over to the next billing cycle is $4,060. Now, what do you notice about the consecutive month's balances? Rather than paying down the debt, the balance is increasing. By paying the minimum amount each month, Alex has no chance of paying down his credit card ever. This is known as negative amortization or neg am basically in a neg am situation the minimum payment is less than the interest that is being charged so the amount owed increases rather than decreases the government recognized that credit card issuers were making a profit by leading people to believe they would eventually pay down the debt by paying only the required minimum the credit card act put an end to this practice the borrower is now assured that the minimum payment will reduce the debt and lead to a payment of what is owed. To make this process clearer to a credit card holder, the minimum payment warning box was added to the credit card statement. A sample of the minimum payment warning box is being shown here. This informs the consumer that by making only minimum payments each cycle, the total amount owed will be paid off in three years. Some credit card companies add another line to the box indicating how much can be saved in interest and time if slightly more than the minimum amount is paid. Let's check our understanding of this. Lucas just received a credit card statement. He has a balance of $3,333.67. The minimum payment warning box states that if he makes only the minimum payment of $35 a month, it will take him 12 years and he will pay a total of $6,472. If he makes a monthly payment of $116, it will take three years to pay off the balance and he will have a total $4,193 dollars paid what will be the percent increase in total payments if lucas only pays the minimum rather than 116 dollars since what we're looking at is the percent increase we're going to take 6472 minus 4193 divide that by 4193 and to make it a percent we'll multiply by 100. On the TI-30XS, we hit the fraction button, do 6472 minus 4193, hit the down arrow to go into the denominator, 4193, right arrow to come out of the fraction, 100, and hit enter. We get 54.4%.